Okay, today is the 23rd, and I think it is Wednesday, and it's 11.07, and I'm doing a virtual office hours for the Math 110, and I've got several questions to go over, and we'll go ahead and start with the first one, and I've gotten three questions, I think, and I'm just going to... Uh, I think it's this one right here. I don't know if they're in order. They're not in order, so let me put it in order by subject. There we go. Now, it looks like we've got a question from 2.1, and that's number 21 in the book. So if you turn to 21 in the book on 2.1, number 21, it'll look like that question, or it's number five online. Number five online in 2.1 homework, or number 21 in the book under 2.1 homework. So let's go to that question and see what it looks like. Okay, we've already went over this question in the previous videos, so let me remind everybody to watch the videos because I've already covered this problem. Now we're talking about domain, range, increasing and decreasing. I'll go over this question again because it is kind of confusing, but watch the videos because the videos I cover, okay? Um, let me go ahead and turn on the whiteboard and I'll just draw on this homework question so I won't have to waste a lot of time. There's the question. And I want to write down um, again, before well, I did this video before, when you're talking about domain and range, domain, range, increasing, and decreasing, which one has to do with the x axis? Well, these three have to deal with the x-axis, meaning that you read the x-axis and you give me x values for the domain, the range, I mean the domain, increasing and decreasing. The range is in regards to the y-axis. It's the only one that is in regards to the y-axis. So I want to make a point of that because a lot of people get confused about which one do you read? You read the y-axis in regards to domain and range. I mean range. Domain and increasing and decreasing is the x-axis. So the first thing says, what is the function doing? Okay, A. It says, is it increasing, decreasing? Well, which way do we read? We read from left to right. And I'm just going to draw a, I don't know if this will work with the transparency. I don't think it will. But I'm going to try it anyway. I don't think it will. Let me try this. Draw an airplane. And let's see if I can move that airplane. Yeah, I can. All right, so we're going to take this airplane, and we're going to bring it over here. And which way do we read? We all read from left to right. So read from left to right. What's this plane doing? Well, it's coming down, and it's going level and then it's what going down left level going down so this plane does nothing but what it decreases it levels out and it decreases does it ever go up no it's coming down it levels out and then it decreases so this plane never does from left to right never does what Increase, and that's that question right there. So, that's that answer. Okay, and when I do domain and range and increasing and decreasing, I stay, I stay consistent. So, uh, when I'm reading the domain and increasing and decreasing, since I'm using the x-axis, I always go from left to right, because that's the way I've been reading for 52 years. Okay, left to right. Okay, now, over what intervals is the function decreasing? Well, we already established that. Let's take our handy dandy airplane and we read from left to right. 
Okay. Are you not going to move for us? There we go. And it's decreasing from negative infinity. Let me go over here and write down our negative infinity. This is positive infinity. And this is negative infinity. Well, here, why aren't you doing the y-axis? Because I'm not doing the range. It's not asking for the range. It's asking for decreasing values. There it is. Decreasing is in the next axis. Okay, follow the directions. Don't make it difficult. All right, so here we go. Negative infinity is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3. And then where is it decreasing? Well, it's going constant. It's leveled out, autopilot. Hold on. Autopilot. I'm trying to do this for y'all, and it's not helping. Here we go. It's autopilot from negative 3 to 4. And then it starts what? Decreasing from 4 to infinity. 4 to infinity is decreasing. So it picks back up at 4, and it decreases to infinity. So, and you've got parentheses on those because of these guys right here. So we're just going to put parentheses on those. So that's why it is this one right here. Okay. Over the open interval, when is it constant? Well, we've already talked about that. Where's autopilot? Right here. The plane is not going up or what? It's not going down. Where's the plane? There it is. No, it's not going to let me move. It's on top of something else. Okay. Right here. From negative 3 to positive 4, the plane does not go up or down. It's constant. So that is negative 3 and 4. And the domain of the function is... Negative infinity to positive infinity because of the arrows on both ends. And it covers from negative infinity to positive infinity because of these two arrows. And these solid lines cover those lines as far as x values. So from negative infinity, it covers and covers and covers and covers and covers and covers to positive infinity. So that's why it's all real numbers. You can also write this as all real numbers. Okay? And I covered that in the last virtual office hours, so make sure you watch the videos that I have done in the past as well as the videos that I'm doing for this class. Okay? So here we go. And I'm going to erase this. And we're going to the next problem. Next problem, I'm going to delete that one. Next problem is 2.2, number 43 in the book, number 8 online. Okay. 43 in the book, number 8 online. And I have covered this in the videos of previous classes because I remember this question. It says, use transformations as the basic functions y is equal to x squared, y is equal to x cubed, y is equal... Which one is it? Well, that's y is equal to absolute value. If you watch my videos, you will see that there is a family of graphs. I covered this in the videos in the last two classes. You take a piece of paper and you divide it into eight sections, like that. This section is a straight line, x to the first power. This one, x to the second power. And it's always going to be a parabola. x to the third power is always going to be like this. x to the fourth power is a quartic. It's going to be a little bit squared off like a parabola. I'll cover this in the videos, so make sure you watch the videos. That's the square root of x. Here is the absolute value of x. Absolute value of x always looks like a v. I cover all of this. Okay, so make sure... You do the family of graphs. Parent graphs, I call them parent graphs. Or the family of graphs. Look them up. I had to show it to my calculus class the other day. Because it follows you all the way through calculus. This is an absolute value because it's a V. Because of the family of graphs in that video. Okay, It's got a horizontal shift. I covered this in the videos also. You got y f of x 
is equal to x plus h, and that's going to be absolute values, and then plus k. The h is the horizontal shift, and it's always the opposite, and the k is the vertical shift. I'll cover this in the videos. So here I've got a negative a. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I thought that was the graph. I'm sorry. This is this is not the graph. It's not absolute value. I thought this was the graph. It says, sketch the graph of this. Sorry. Um, this is not right. Evidently, somebody put that as an answer. Okay? So this is a squared function. The squared function means it's just a parabola. Okay? It's got a horizontal shift of 8 to the right. 8 to the right. And it's also got a vertical shift of 0. Vertical 0. So it looks like this. 8 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it does not have a vertical shift, so it looks like that. It's a parabola because of the parent graphs. Anything x squared is going to be a parabola. Now, the way that you draw that, it's a regular parabola because it's there's a 1 in front of the parenthesis because there's not a 2 or a 3 there. And if you watch the, the, the videos that I do in Math 110 last semester and Math 110 spring semester 2017, you'll see that that's a regular function. So it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, all that good stuff. So you go to here and you do, it looks like that function. And you have a of 8 to the right, so you put down here, vertical shift, horizontal shift of 8 to the right, and that's your answer. And you hit save, and you hit final. Okay, I have no idea how to get rid of this right here. I guess you have to hit clear. Hold on a second. Similar question. Let me do this one. Minus 5. So that would be 5 to the right. So now I've got a clear graph. I hit that function. And I do that function right there. And then I do 5 to the right. Like that. And I hit X. And then I hit Save. And then I hit Enter. That's how you do it. Okay? And if you watch the videos, you'll see that I go into horizontal shifts and I spend a lot of time on horizontal vertical shifts right after the completing the square or right before completing the square. I cover a lot of the horizontal and vertical shifts. Okay? So that's that question. Watch the videos. That's why I do them. I'm one of the only teachers that do it. Next question. 2.3, number 19. Uh, in the book, number four online. 19 in the book, number four online. Here's another one I cover in the videos. And it says, use the transformation of the graph to sketch y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, blah, 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 blah. Okay? The first one, x squared. Now, since the 4 is not inside the square here, since it's not x minus 4 quantity squared, this is a vertical shift. Okay? That's the vertical shift parabola. The parabola is regular because it doesn't have a 2 or a 3 in front of it. See the videos? And I'm just going to clear this. I don't know if I can clear it or not, but let me see if I can clear it. Yeah, clear. And I'm going to draw on top of it, and then we'll draw it as we go, okay? So, here is this one right here. I'm just going to draw it down here. That's going to be y sub 1 is equal to x squared, so x plus 0, quantity squared, minus 4. The reason I put that plus 0 there is because this 4 right here is outside the square. So that means that this is 4 and this is 0. So I've got a horizontal shift of 0 to the right or left and a vertical shift of 
four down. So this one right here, we'll do it in black. Looks like this. One, two, three, four. It's a regular parabola because this number here is one. Okay, because that right there is one, and you got to watch the videos to see how we get that. A is equal to one, so it's a regular parabola. Okay. Now we'll do this one in red. This one right here, we'll do it in red. Now we've got a one half right there. Okay, now the one half is squared. So really we have y sub 2 is equal to 1 fourth x squared minus 4. So now we've got a vertical shift of 4 down. And this is 1 fourth, which means it's a wide parabola. Watch the videos to see why it's wide because I cover that in the videos. So now we've got the same parabola, but it's going to be wider because of the one half. So it looks something like that. Okay. And now we'll do the last one in blue. And the last one is a vertical shift of four down. And this is going to be a 16x squared minus 4. That's going to be the answer when you get through. So this is 16, which is going to make it very skinny. See the videos where I cover A is greater than 1 or A is between 0 and 1. And that's going to make it real skinny. And there's what your three graphs are going to look like. Okay. Now, I remember this question, and I think that there is an incorrect part on this question. They use the one-half. They do not square it, and that is not correct. That is not mathematically correct. So you may have to put a one-half as, as, uh, as far as the drawing when you draw it on the graph. Uh, I do not like this question because it is incorrect. In order for you to draw the graph of y sub 2 and y sub 3, you have to take the 1 half and you have to raise it to the second power as well as the x to the second power so it becomes 1 fourth x squared. Same way with the 16 x squared and the blue. So I disagree with this question because I think they use the 1 half and the 4 and that's not correct. Okay? But that's how you draw it. You're supposed to have a drawing like this. And I know I've covered some of those in the homework in the videos. When I go over homework questions, I know I've covered that because I remember that question. Okay, that takes care of that one and this one. This one says 3.255 in the book and number one, number 11 online. And this says, find the equation of the quadratic uh, satisfying the given conditions, hint the values, a, h, h, blah, 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 blah. Express the answer, blah, 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 blah. Okay? They give you a vertex. All right? It says, find the equation of the quadratic. I like that word, quadratic. That means it's a parabola. Okay? And they say, express the answer in blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, they give us a vertex right here of negative 2 and negative 5. So that means, and I'm just going to draw this out because you need to see it as you go, and you need to ask yourself, what is it doing? What is the drawing doing? Okay, so it looks like to me we've got a function here, and we've got a vertex of negative 2 and negative 5. So negative 2 and negative 5. So it's in the third quadrant. And it says it goes through the point 7 and 157. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 157 is way up here. So it's going something like this. Okay? So that's the kind of drawing we've got. All right? So we know it has x-intercepts. We know it has a vertical shift and a horizontal shift of negative 2 and negative 5. So that means it is going to be a 
it's going to look like this. We've got y or p of x is equal to a times x plus h or x minus h, sorry. I don't like to use x minus h, but x minus h quantity squared plus k. So we know that that plus k is negative 5. So it goes right there. And we know that the negative h, now be careful here, because that negative 2 means that it goes to the left, so that's going to be a plus a negative 2, which is negative 2, or a positive 2. A negative, negative 2 is a positive. So we're going to put p of x is equal to a times x minus a negative 2 squared. And that's going to be p of x is equal to a times x plus 4, plus 2, sorry, minus 5. Okay, so that's part of your question right there. Okay. Now, we still don't know about the, uh, we don't know about the a yet. We're going to have to solve that. Hold on just a minute. My phone is going off. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, sometimes I have to answer depending on who it is. Um, okay, now we do the second part. The second part is we're going to plug and chug. What do you think, plug and chug, Hubert? Well, this is an X, and this is a Y. And this basically says Y is equal to A times X plus 2 quantity squared minus 5. So now I'm going to plug in X and Y. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to erase this. And we're going to plug in 157 is equal to A times X is, one, is 7, sorry, 7 plus 2, quantity squared, minus 5. And now we're just going to solve for A. So let's solve for A. Let me erase this arbitrary mark right there. I don't know where that came from. And that's going to give us 157 is equal to, well, we're going to minus 5, or add 5. And that's going to give us equals A times 9 squared. And 157 plus 5 is 162, I think. Yeah, 162 is equal to A times 81. Divide by 81. Divide by 81. A is equal to 2. So now, you just take that 2 and plug it in right here. And that's going to give you P of X is equal to 2 times X plus 2 quantity squared minus 5. Now you have to finish it out. Okay? Where did that come from? Okay? Now you got to finish it out. So what do you do? Well, this is shortcut number, number 1. So that's going to be 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 5. And that's going to be 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 minus 5. And then that's going to be 2x squared plus 8x plus this, plus 5 plus 3. And that should be your answer. Okay? That's a good test question. Now make sure you pause it and rewind it however you need to do it because now you know how to do it. So let's type it in so we feel good about ourselves. So here we go. The quadratic equation satisfying is 2x quantity squared plus 8x plus 3. And you say, check all so you can feel good about yourself. And you do. 
And that's the answer. Good job, folks. All right. So make sure you pause that videos wherever you need to pause it or rewind it or whatever so you can see how to do it. But that's how you do it. You got one step here. Now I click it and it don't turn to there we go. You got one step. First step is to actually plug and chug in. Now you got to be careful here because you've got to have, you know this is a, a negative, so it has to be to the left. And for it to be the left, you have to have a positive 2. That's the only time it's negative. It's the opposite. Okay? So you got to have a positive 2 so you can have a vertical shift to the left. I mean, a horizontal shift to the left. So you got to have a positive 2. The only way to get a positive 2 with x minus h is to plug in a negative 2. And that's what we did. And we got x plus 2. So it's kind of going bass backwards right there. And that's your answer. Okay? And that is the three questions that were sent, or three or four questions that were sent to me to get today. Um, that's that one. I think that's it. So I'm going to clear it, and I'm going to post this next for those that need it. Keep those questions coming.